All right, guys, welcome to episode seven. In this episode, we're gonna continue the wiring. We're gonna do a little bit of plumbing. I'm gonna show you guys how to rectify a mistake we made in a previous episode. All right, guys, so not everything goes to plan. So Jake's done an amazing job putting the fuel pump in the tank, but I have had an issue. So if the camera comes around, now this is my fault, no one else's. If we put the floor edge through there, it just touches a plug, it clears the fittings, but obviously we're hitting the fitting there. Now, this is a plastic pump and a plastic fitting. So like I said, my fault, no one else's, but we should have measured, double check before we weld it in. So what we're gonna do is I'll whip the tank back out. We'll get Jace to whip the tank back out. We'll cut it, we'll lower it down 20 mil. Now, if we go down 20 mil at the moment, we're hitting by say three mil here. The fitting may have say five mil, theoretically should give us 15 mil of clearance, will be a lot safer. So it's a, it is a high pressure pump, it's gonna pump out. So we snap a fitting, we don't wanna be filling the car up with fuel. So we've gotta make sure it's definitely safe. So tank back out, we've had a miscue, we'll get it rectified and we'll show you guys what it looks like. Righto, so in a previous episode, we've mounted the radiator. Now it's time to plumb it up. So what we need to plumb it up, a bit of welding wire or fencing wire or something like that with a bit of strength about it that and a pair of side cutters. So what we're gonna do is make a template of our radiator hoses. Now to do that, just follow me down here. Wire number one, we'll do our top radiator hose. So all we need to do is work out our straight port where we think the bend should be. Get a 90 degree in it without stabbing the cameraman here. We'll hang it out the side. We'll bring it back across where we think the next one. So we've made ourselves an S-shaped hose. We work it out, we cut it off. So, and then just double check it. So, we know that we're in here like so. We're very close to what we need to be. So, that's template number one for the upper radiator hose to be made. So that there, what, <coughs> excuse me. What we will do is we'll go to our local Auto Pro. You guys may have a Bursons or a Super Cheap or anyone else like that. Take that in there, that's the upper hose. We need to get that same shape. We'll measure the size, the diameters to make sure that's correct. And then the guys hopefully there will have something on the shelf to suit. Now what we need to do, so that's hose number one. So keep that one. Hose number two is a little bit more difficult. Same theory, we still need to make a template with the wire. So we've got our fitting down the bottom of the radiator down here. It's got to come out. We want to S shape it all the way up and we want to go to our extra port. Now the issue is here, is on the factory one with the LS, they shoot out towards the guard. Now that, that's gonna make it super difficult to get it to fit up. So what we have done, and we'll put it on the link below, we've got a new fitting. Now it's an aftermarket one. There is so many guys on the market, you don't need to buy, what have we got? We've got a ProFlow one, but there's a thousand brands of this stuff, eBay, uh, any, any of the other guys do sell them. So we want a straight fit port. So if we get the straight port, and get the shortest possible one you can. So I'm gonna remove it, Fold our new one on, it's straight, with our wire template, we'll run it down, we'll make ourselves a sample hose out of the wire, and then we'll have our two, I'll shoot us down to our local auto pro, and we'll see what we can get. All right, so my two radiator hose samples are made. Now what I'm gonna do before I head to the local auto pro is a couple of things I wanna sort out so I can get it all in one go. So over here, samples. Uh, we're gonna do the heater hoses as well. Now the heater hoses are both half inch inside, but when they come out to the engine, they're gonna plumb around this side, so we'll run them down around. We have different size fittings here, and also on the radiator, we have different sizes. So if we have a look down here, you won't pick it up the camera, but I will measure. Your two, port, two sizes are completely different, so I'll measure them up as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick sketch on the whiteboard to show you guys how we're gonna plumb it up. We're gonna write our sizes down, our length of our hoses, so when we go down, hopefully, we only have to make one trip. Right now, that is a real rough sketch, and I didn't do a lot of schooling, as you can see, it's pretty rough. So what I'm gonna do now, I'll get the verniers out, I'll jump down on each port, I'll measure all the sizes of all the fittings, we'll write down, I'll get some rough lengths, and then we'll go for a drive and get some. All 
Right, so this is where it's going to get a little bit difficult, a little bit confusing. So the heater hose, the old original stuff, is half inch heater hose. Now if we come around to this side, this is where we really want to take our measurement. So we're going from half inch, we're going to 16 mil. So half inch, normally we'll push on to 16 mil, or you can get an adapter barb, that'll be fine. Either way, we'll see what the guys got available. But it definitely won't push on here. So we're going to 19 mil, which is three quarters. So we will have to upsize the hose. So the two fittings will come round. We'll get a two reducers back from that size down to half inch and we'll see what the guys have got in stock. Right, we've got our sizes, we've got a few measures, or one last thing to check. Overflow. We've got eight mil. Eight mil five sixteen, either will work. Right, all I need to do is get a rough length on this thing, so. Tape measure, just a ballpark. A bit over two metres each hose. So we get five metres for a heater hose. Uh, 0.5 a metre here will be heaps. And our adapter hose in these two here will get 0.5 a metre. That will give me a chance to just adapt a half inch into the size we need. So, all right, let's whip down, let's get some hoses, see how we go. All right, what's going on? Yeah, not much, about you? All right, I've done a little bit of a mat for me, HT. Yep, sweet, and I need to cut the radiator hoses, so do my usual, am I right there, shoot up? Yeah, yeah, you know the way, go for it. Sweet, all right, if you want to grab the other stuff, we'll yeah, run sweet. upstairs, so, all right, we'll take you out the back room, we'll see what we can find. Right, so most of the guys, when you go to any auto pro burst and super cheap, will have a full setup and a full range that like we've got here. Now, these guys are really good to deal with, easy at auto pro and castle main, so through these runs in and out, I'm gonna try and find these two shape hoses. And then obviously, when I do get close to it, we'll double check our measurements. So, for a start, we wanna start at 38 mil. I've got it written on the phone. I'll find the section with the 38 mil hoses. We'll lay these on the ground, and we'll slowly work through the boxes and see what we can find. Right, we're a little bit short, so we're getting close. Alright, so that's pretty close. We've got a VL Commodore 5 litre. It's a lower one, but we're gonna use it for the upper. So I think I can get that to make make that work. Now I reckon I can get that to work if we cut it off, but now it's in the shape of that, that to me looks like it's off a AU Falcon, but that return port may even work with a factory setup. So I might just check both options. So maybe a little straight fitting we put off the engine, we may remove it, we may not, but I think between these two, we should get it to work. So we've got the VL and the AU Falcon. So if these do work, the link below, will put the part numbers so you guys at home know what to use. Alright, so we picked up our goodies from the local Auto Pro. So, radiator overflow, let's just work as we pull them out of the box. So, the overflow for the radiator, feed down the side of your radiator. Oop, get down through the gap there, which will drop in there roughly. Get me a rough measurement. Pushed on. Suck that in there nicely. If you want, you can bang a peak clip on, but that should sit there pretty pretty good. Righto, so me big setup here. Now I'm not gonna put any hose clamps on yet, I'll do all that at the end. So let's just trial and get everything right. So we did say this was a uh, Ford Falcon AU V8. There's our hose number on there. So Now when you cut it, cut it to the furthest point, 
try it on there and you can always cut back. We can't add on as we all know, so get that back off. So we cut down near the bend there somewhere. Obviously cut away from the body. Try it again. Now, if we have a look at the hose here, we are kinked. Now if you go down close there, it's gonna be pretty flat, so, and we're touching the thermo fan, so we've still got ourselves a fair bit of room there. So what I'm gonna do, uh, Chevy will probably throw it in fast forward. I'll just keep cutting increments of the hose off, say in 10, 20 mil increments all the way till hopefully we'll get it to fit, but like I said, just slowly work your way back. Now we are cutting down on there, away from the body, and it is a steel cap boot. So if I do slip, I'm pretty sure my toes will be safe. I'm sure the steel cap will outdo the blades. One thing to remember when you put the hose on, we've got it down the bottom. If you twist your hose, your, your hose will kink. Now just make sure when you get it where you think it needs to be. Just keep, you just keep rotating the hose and you'll find its happiest location there. So that's got pretty good flow through there. And clamp down the bottom. So number one hose is done. So you've got the number of the hose, we know what we've got to do. So we'll move to the upper. Now we were going for the, the S bend, which was the little one. So. All right, so first issue here, we're a fair bit short. Now, if I try and extend that hose across, we are going to kink it, it's not going to happen. So. Let's check the other end. There's a bit of a bend the other way. And it's kicking the other way. So alright, so what do we we failed with? The Commodore VL5 leader one's not gonna work. So I'll jump in the car shortly, go down, we'll swap that over. But just in case we've got anything else wrong, what we'll do is we'll jump on the heater hoses, make sure they're all good. Alright, so we're gonna bang the heater hoses on now. Now we're gonna replace the heater hoses all the way to the heater box. I mean they've been under that dash since this car was built. So I'll jump underneath, undo the hose clamp slice down the side of the hose where it's on the fitting there and gently uh, slide it off and show you guys how safely to remove it without damaging your heater box. Now you do not want to reef on the hose too hard on the heater box, it will be a little bit frail too. So slide under, we'll see if we can get them off. Right, so we've got our new coil. Let's lay that out, we'll grab both ends. So what I want to do is I want to feed them both in, slide under the dash, connect them both back up, then we'll work out the engine bay exactly where they're going to run. So both ends, feed them through. Right, to save me getting in and out, what I'm going to do is grab a couple of hose clamps, jump in, slide underneath, hook them both up. Right. So I'll put the hose clamps on, I'll run them through underneath the dash to the heater core. We'll just lay the hoses over the front there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up the larger size two fittings on the other side where they go to the motor. So we've got our two hoses, so we've got our three quarter and our five eight hoses, so we'll push both of them on. Now they are super tight. Right, so what we'll do is we'll bang some hose clamps on them. So they're both clamped down. We'll grab our two reducing barbs to get it back down to half inch. I'll feed them underneath the radiator there somewhere. We'll get it a nice spot. Place the half inch hose where we want it. Mark it, cut it, put them all together, hose clamp them. That's the heater system done.
Alright, I've just shortened one up because the fitting was going to be up in view. So I want to keep the joiners down as low as possible so they're out of view. Uh, so the engine bay looks a little bit neater. So we'll just uh, pull the fitting back out, feed it back in. Righto, back to the local auto pro. Got myself another hose. Uh, we've gone for the Chimera this time. Now everyone knows the Holden Chimera. It was a hunk of junk, but hopefully something salvageable off the Chimera will be the radiator hose. So we'll have a go, there's no guarantee. Righto, so as you can see, the upper hose hasn't gone to plan. Now there is a way around this. So what we will do, is we'll remove the hose. Now, I'm gonna want this end on here. We're gonna rotate it down to where we roughly need it now. Still using our Chimera hose, we'll push it onto this end. We'll rotate it around to where we need it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to join the two hoses. So we've got two perfectly good bends and we've got a nice section of straight. Now the way around that uh, is the, we've got an aeroflow book the boys had out the back. So we've gone the aeroflow book. They've just pretty much got inline hose adapters and you can also run a gauge sender out of it if you'd like. So we've used, I think, ProFlow and some parts. We've got the aeroflow book. So like I'm saying, there's so many guys out there that make it. What we'll do is we'll jump on long water one of these because I've got it in front of me, the catalogue was in the toolbox. It'll work really easy. So we'll splice it, we'll join it, we'll get that done later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to wiring and all the thermo fans on. That'll be ordered and hopefully tomorrow we'll throw that in. Wiring time now. So I've got to get the thermo fans sorted. So in the floor you've seen Jake lift a couple of coils of wire. So one's coiled up, it's got two twins for thermo fan one, thermo fan two. So all I need to do is down underneath the radiator hose here. I'll drill a hole in, I'll put a rubber grommet, Feed the two wires out, very simple. They're labelled what they are, one and two. Doesn't matter which way around you get it. Join them up together there. I'm gonna cut them, solder them, and then we can move on to the fuel system. This is just a personal preference. I cut my zip ties with a blade. Now everyone's different now. The worst thing in the world, if someone cuts a zip tie on an angle like that, it leaves a sharp edge. Every time you go to service or fix anything from now on in, it will cut your arm, cut your hand. Now everyone who's worked on a car has cut themselves on a zip tie before. So all I do, get the knife blade, cut them off nice and flush. Like so, no sharp edge there, perfect. Alright, I'm just going to do a quick check now, these fans here can push and pull, it depends. Especially being an eBay special, not to say which way this is going to be wired up. So, rather than me cut, join it all, start the car, wait for them to come on and realise that they're blowing rather than sucking, uh, I'll just quickly give a test, hook up power straight off your battery. Now yeah, for any of you guys at home, just use a jump battery, won't really matter. And you shouldn't hurt the fan no matter what way it goes, so we hook it up. Now what I want to do is make sure it's blowing on my hand, which I can feel the air coming through there. Now if I hook it up the other way, just as a quick test. I can feel that blowing on my leg, so we're blowing back the other way. Right, so they are a directional fan. Now when you buy the eBay special, which we have, which was really cheap and they seem to work quite well then, just double check which way it is. So obviously blue power means it'll draw the air through the radiator. If the blue was a negative, it'll blow it back through the radiator. So you always need obviously to draw it through. So the momentum of the car, pushing the air on the front, the fan sucking through the other way, it should cool the system quite well. Right, so another little note for you guys that are doing DIY at home, see that? We've staggered our two joints. Now, it's a very basic thing. Any auto like any mechanic would know, offset your joints. So if you solder them, you join them, they ever rub through or wear down, they should never touch, should never short out. So always stagger joints uh, before soldering.
Righto, to the rear of the fuel system. Jace has lowered down the pump inside the tank for me so we can clear the floor. So he's done a great job with that. The aim here is we're gonna plumb the pump into the original hard line. Now to do that, we have a couple of things over here. We have rod shop rail adapters, we need two of. Hose clamps, a T-piece, some instructions. And behind me, I've got my trusty cup of hot water, which I'm just softening the ends of the hose with, with some fuel injection hose. Now, it has to be fuel injected rated. We're gonna have a lot of pressure in here, we don't wanna blow out a hose. Now the reason I'm soaking them two ends in the hot water, if that'll sit here, our rail adapters are the next size up. Now we will be able to push them on, they're just gonna be a little bit tight. Once they're on there, they'll definitely stay on there. So what we'll do is, adapters, we'll fit them to the pumps. Now what I'm gonna do for you guys, same as up the front, I'm just gonna run through everything quickly, finger tight, won't do any hose clamps up, at the end there, I'll just go over it, hose clamp, nip up my fittings. Righto, so now we have our hose softened. All going to plan, we'll push them onto our elbows. Now just make sure when you do push it on, it is really hard to push on, but make sure that the rubber's nice and soft and it pushes all the way home. So one down, we'll just throw the other one in there. They're tipping me lovely cup over. Whee! Tipping me cup over, which just happened. Undo the other one. Now, the other one's pushed all the way home, so it was super hard to do. Would have been a lot easier if I didn't spill the water and we had to push it on there. So, these two fittings here, we need to loop them around. They're gonna go into our T-piece, which is just here, so they're not gonna need to be very long. Which I believe will run the T nice and short. Bit of a thumb mark, the T-piece will sit down nice and low in here. Nice, there's a nice little gap between the tank and the brace, so we just feed this underneath here, like so, onto the original line, like so. So there's the plumbing for our dead head system, and we don't need to do any more. Uh, there is an option for a breather which you can drill out, but we do not need that. The factory tank over here has a breather system already set in it, we'll leave the breather system in there, so ignore that part. So that's the plumbing done. I'm just gonna quickly run over this, bang the hose clamps on, nip them up, then it's time to run the cable to the rear. Righto, so the fuel system's all plumbed up. Now, we've gotta wire it up now. Jake, with his wiring, makes it very easy. All it is, two wires, so we've got a twin core wire here, and here he's labelled it. So we've got the label down here. Look. Just read it there, fuel pump. So all we need to do, super, super easy, is I've got to run it to the rear, to the pump, and I've got to join two wires, so anyone can do that, anyone at home. So what my plan of attack is, we'll run it up around the top of the dash, down around the kick panel, we'll pull a couple of trims off along the bottom, we'll tuck it in neatly where no one can stand on or squash the wires, I'll drill and grommet it through a panel at the back of the seat, solder the two wires up, done. All right guys, I'm just wiring the fuel pump up now. Obviously you've seen us run the cable to the rear. Now, when wiring the pump plug up, there's a diagram in the instructions. All you need is the positive, negative, and the two sender wires, we'll just tie them out of the way. They're not needed. So uh, I'll finish wiring this up and soldering it, and we should be right to go. So that'll be a wrap for this week. Like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching, and see you guys next week. So we just finished editing, but something turned up in the post. Overnight Express from Rocket Industries, the last piece of the puzzle for the water fitting. So uh, part number for you guys there. Awesome, and thanks so much to the guys at Rocket. I mean, we only ordered that late yesterday, it's turned up. It's cost me more in express freight than the actual fittings were. So the only thing we do need to do, I need my gas glue. Through the tool toolbox and the old warbird. So we just need a fitting, get rid of the wires off it. Now these here, they are designed so you can run an extra gauge, a mechanical gauge, whatever you want to do. So in a minute, I'll put a bit of glue on there shortly. Feed that on there. Last piece of the puzzle. Obviously for looks wise, we'll face the fitting down. 
Now, there will be a neater way of doing that. You can get a little eighth bung if you want to, but we're in a bit of a hurry. This is only a street cruiser, it's not a show car. That's going to go in there. We'll grab a few hose clamps, water system done. Thanks again for watching.